Python allows you to organize your code into modules and packages. Using the system, we can share and use each other's code. In this video, I'm going to cover virtual environments and the import statement. I'll also give some very basic directions on how to create your own packages. If you plan on importing anything, let alone installing anything, you should create a virtual environment. We say virtual inf for short or just vinf. A virtual environment will isolate your packages and modules from the system packages and modules and other virtual environments. Creating a virtual environment is ridiculously easy. All you have to do is say python -m vinv and a directory. Typically, I create it in a directory called vinv itself. This is the path where you want to create your virtual environment. I typically put virtual environments at the top level of my projects. So I might have a projects file, a projects directory, and we might be doing a project like a calculator. And then under this directory, I will create the virtual environment. Note that you should be using Python 3.7. Whatever Python version you use will be used to create the virtual environment and will be accessible in the virtual environment. Once you've created your virtual environment, it's time to activate it. So on Linux, you would say dot vinv slash bin slash activate. Another word for this dot is source. What this does is it runs the commands in this file as if it was running it from the shell itself. On Windows, you have to do it a little differently. You would say vinv backslash capital S scripts backslash activate. Note that you don't have to source this, you just run it. Once you've activated your virtual environment, all the packages you install with pip will be installed in your virtual environment and immediately accessible. You can go to pypy.org to find a list of publicly available packages. You may also find packages you want to install at your favorite project's website. The import statement is a little bit complicated, but we'll build up to it gradually. So let's start with the simplest form of the import statement. So this would be import and then some identifier. This identifier would be the same as any variable name that you can have, right? What this will do is import the module with the same name and then assign it to that variable. As an example, we can say import sys. Sys is one of those built-in modules that comes with Python. The exact step Python follows on importing is it first checks sys.modules. Sys.modules is a dictionary that contains all the modules that have previously been loaded. If the module has already been loaded, it's just going to assign that module to the variable name and be done. If the module hasn't been loaded, then Python will look in your virtual environment for a module named uh, id.py. Okay. If it finds that module, then it will execute it. However, when executing it, that module's globals will not be your globals. It has its own module namespace. Once it's executed that file, then it'll store that module in sys.modules under the name that it found under the file name. And finally, it will assign a variable to the module. You can access the module's namespace through the variable using the attribute syntax. Note that people typically like to import before running any other code, but this isn't necessary. You can also import from within functions. What that will do is import the module into that function's local variable namespace. Accessing the contents of the module is pretty simple. So we would just do sys.modules. This dot is the attribute access syntax in Python. If you don't know what's in a module, you should read the documentation for it. But if you don't have access to that, or you just want a quick reminder, from an interactive shell, you can do help sys, or you can even do dir sys. Help will print out a friendly message showing you what the module can do. Dir will show you all the variables in the module's namespace. If anything goes wrong during an import, it will raise an import error. 
you could, if you wanted to, catch that exception. So you could do, for instance, try and say like import foo and then accept import error and then do something here, right? So it's possible to do this, and I did used to do that when I wrote code that had to run on both Python and Python 3 because the modules would have different names, okay? Typically, an import error only happens if there's no module of that name. So you might have spelled the module name wrong or you might have forgotten to install it. Uh, the module has a syntax error, or otherwise it fails to run. Like it raises an exception while it's running. There's really not a lot you can do uh, other than fixing the name of the module or installing it or fixing the module that's broken. You can also import multiple modules at the same time. For instance, I can say import OS and sys. The comma separates module names. This is the same as saying import OS and then import sys. Sometimes modules are put into a package. Packages are paths to files in Python, and modules are the actual files that are in Python. For instance, if I had foo slash bar slash baz.py, I could import baz by saying import foo dot bar dot baz. Okay, and that will look up the baz file, run it, and then store it in the modules. There's a little bit of other magic that happens as well. We'll talk about that later. Note that if you wanted to access something inside of this, you would have to use the attribute access. So if we did import os.path, then we would say os.path.join to use the join function that's inside of the path module. You can also import modules with a different name. So I could say import sys as s. And what that will do is load the sys module and then bring it into this namespace under the name s. So I could do s.modules. And that's looking in the sys module and pulling out the modules attribute. This also works for packages. So if I said import OS dot path as p, what this will do is import the module and assign it to the variable p. So I could say then p dot join. You can also import specific things from a module. This uses the from syntax. So you could say from OS dot path import join. And so now we can just use a join function from the, the, the path module. You can import multiple things. We could say like, you know, uh, A and B and C like this, or we can use parentheses. A, B, C. And of course, we could put as is for each of these. So we could say, instead of A, we can say A as Z, B as Y, and C as is. Modules have a few special attributes that may be useful. One is underscore underscore name. And this is the full name of the module, including the package. There's also package. which tells you which package the module was found in. Uh, there's file, which I like to use to find where the module actually came from. And then finally, there's the doc string. Okay. Python allows you to run modules as scripts. So from the command line, I can say Python dash M, the module name with any package if there is any. And then I can pass in some parameters to that script. Okay, so we've already done this with the vnvomp module. We did python m vnv, and then we gave it a parameter vnv. One way this can work is inside the module itself, you can look at the name. If the name is main, 
that means the, the Python file is being run as a script. And so you'll often see in some modules, so you might see in the vm.py module, you'll see module code, and then you'll see an if underscore underscore name, underscore underscore equals, underscore underscore main, and then you'll have script code here. This code is always run when it's imported or when it's run as a script, and this code is only run when it's run as a script. You can create your own packages and modules, but it's a little bit more complicated than what you'd like. I'm gonna to try to give you a very simplified version that should get you started. If you need more direction, feel free to reach out to me or go look up on the internet for multiple help. The resource that I want you to use for learning how to make your own packages is the website called Packaging python.org everyone should be familiar with the contents of this website okay so for this example we're going to create a package called my code and so at the top level we're going to have a directory called my code if I can spell this is the project directory okay and then we have two choices we can either create a single module or we can create a package with sub-modules and sub-packages. So if you were to create a package, then we would have a package called MyCode. And then we need an underscore underscore init file dot pi. And this is empty is fine. I actually recommend that you keep these files empty. And then you can have some kind of module. So we have foo.py is a module. And we can have a subdirectory. So we can have bar. And then we need another init in that directory. And then we can have baz.py. And so this will allow you to import mycode.foo or mycode.bar.baz. Okay. And finally, you also need a setup.py. Okay. Your setup.py is going to look something like this. So the first thing you're going to do is say from setup tools, import and we're going to need setup and find packages. Let's close that off. Next, we're going to call setup with the following parameters. So we have name is equal to my code. We're going to have a version. This is going to be 0.0.1 .0 or whatever version you want. And there's other attributes you can put in here about the author and about the website and things like that. We're going to have Python requires. And this is going to be greater than or equal to 3.7 because we're writing Python 3.7 code. Uh, we can specify packages if we do have packages in our um, project here. And we'd use the find packages function. And we're going to specify include equals and a list. So we're going to have my code and then my code dot asterisk. Close that off. Close off the parentheses. Uh, but if we just have a single module or multiple modules, we would just do pi modules and we'd list them out. So in this case, we would just have my code. Typically, I use one or the other, but not both. And that, let's close all this off. So that is a very basic setup.py that you can use for your code. Let me adjust it there. Again, go to packaging.python.org. They'll give you recommendations, and they'll tell you how to do things, and they'll give you details about what the parameters actually do. Once you've created your package, you probably want to install it in your Python virtual environment. You can use pip install dash e and you point to the project directory, so my code. Okay. Or if you're in the my code directory, you just use dot for the current directory. Okay. What this does is this will install the package into your virtual environment, but link out the files. If you change the files and then restart the script and it imports it again, it'll see the changes. Okay. 
Before you go and distribute your code on PyPy, um, you probably want to talk to me or some experienced Python developer to make sure that you're all good to go and you haven't made any rookie mistakes. Um, it's a fairly involved process. And in future videos, I'm going to go more in depth into what Setup Tools actually does. Uh, we're going to talk about conflict resolution, about how when you have multiple packages and some of those packages want different versions of the same packages, how to handle that. And then finally, I'm going to talk about how to use Git. It's an invaluable tool for writing your own code. Anyway, guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope it gave you insight into how modules work, how you can use them, and how you can write your own. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Discord, and I'm always available. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video on the theory of Python by Real Physics. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord or support me on Patreon. Links are in the description below. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.